Just let it out, bro. Just do it right now. Quick oh one. Just God. a quick scream. Mm. What a boy. Okay, ready? <laughs> Every single season, I have the reality that there's only so much I can achieve in such a short period of time, like a few months in the middle of winter when you might not even get a swell for two of those months. I'm 28 years old and I'm realizing, gosh, I'm in my prime, but I don't have like forever to keep doing this. And I, I can't just wait for something to happen. I gotta go make it happen. I realize there is a time where one day I won't be able to be the best outright. And not that I am now, the difference is, is there's an opportunity. And I can't let that door shut yet. I have to do whatever it takes to be the absolute best I could possibly be. And that's why I surf from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. All hours of daylight because I have such high standards for myself and I have a vision of what I wanna do. I have to do what is in my head, otherwise I won't be able to sleep at night. I need to have a win every day. And the easiest way to feel like you're winning is when you ride a 80 foot wave. I had just gotten home from Nazare, my confidence was high. And all I wanted to do was ride big waves. And when December came around and Jaws lit up, it was a long time coming from even just the Nazare swell. It felt like an eternity again. And the entire surfing world was converging because they'd witnessed what happened in Nazare and not a lot of surfers went for that one. And so the hype for the first Jaws swell was real. And I knew I wanted to sit deeper, ride a bigger wave, and get more barrel than anyone. The day is awesome. It's firing conditions. It's bluebird sunny. I got the best safety team in the world. It's all up to me to just do what I've been dreaming of doing for so long, but haven't done it yet. The CBD MD Jaws Big Wave Championships, it is on. The ultimate for me is to win in my own backyard at Jaws. If I could win at this spot, it'll mean the whole world to me. Billy Kemper looking for the barrel, finds the barrel. Oh, this is it. Who is going to turn on this hero wave? Go, Kai, go, go. Do it. Come, Come on. on, you on can the corner. Make it. No. Billy Kemper making history as a four-time Jaws champ. The whole contest, I felt like I just could never be in the right spot, and it was so frustrating. Oh, it's nothing worse than losing. We all knew what I needed to do, and I didn't do it. The best thing about failure is you can learn from it. And when you win, you can't always learn from something like that. And so from my failures from the previous season, I figured out all right, I gotta step it up a notch. I have to sit deeper. I have to sit farther out. I gotta wait for the bigger waves. And I gotta put myself in a position that last year I wasn't willing to do. People seem to survive all the time, so 
why can't I? I train as hard as anybody, if not harder, and I'm putting my entire life into this. At a certain point, you're afraid for 12 years and you sort of just gotta say, screw it. I was just so over being afraid. If I'm in the spot to go on a wave that maybe I'm too scared to go on, but I know my ability can handle it, I just gotta try. You don't know until you go. The ride was beautiful. Even though it wasn't in a contest, with a wave like that, it felt like I definitely had won. In that moment, I knew my surfing went to the next level. It was really interesting because the first time you do anything like that, you actually only have so much you can deliver on that. It wasn't like I could go all day doing it. I really focused for about three hours of just trying to put myself in that headspace where the bigger the wave came in, if it was a rideable wave, I was gonna turn and paddle for it. And I knew I was getting in a rhythm once I started getting those waves and I wasn't falling. I was just riding them all the way through and paddling back out and paddling past every single person and going to a spot where no one else was sitting. And when a wave came in, it would just come straight to me. I don't want nothing but, yeah. I don't want nothing but, some dollars, the papers and wallets and guales and guales. I don't want nothing but. Yeah. I don't want nothing but. Yeah. Come some dollars, the papers and wallets and guales and guales. I don't want nothing but. Yeah. I don't want nothing but. Yeah. Come some dollars, the papers and wallets and guales and guales. I don't want nothing but. Yeah. I don't want nothing but. Yeah. Come some dollars, the papers and wallets and guales and guales. All of a sudden, it became a lot less about the fear overcoming. It was all about performance. You know, with fear, you can make a choice. Either let it debilitate you, or you can take it and use it as your superpower. And I realized that. I grew up with nothing, yeah. I started off with nothing. Put that work, 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 yeah. I've been hustling, that's I need. And I work for it, better work for it.
Should we look at another turn wave or a barrel wave? Um, this is my probably my best turn wave I have. Let's see it. So per, you're so behind it. Yeah. On this so wave. I was just waiting because it was like a big peak, and I was I like, I need to do anything else better. If I was on this wave right now, okay. I would have gone down a really aggressive turn, and I would have started doing a really aggressive cutback, and just to stall, I would have hit a chop and done the backside three. That's how I would have drawn my okay. lines and. I, mean, I think just reviewing this footage yeah. is so key because that's how I do it. And already when I'm visualizing it, I would actually fade earlier and then do a top turn before okay. doing the three now. Yeah. And then I would be dropping in where you were. Yeah. But it would be right. I'd be dropping in now. <laughs> yeah. My younger brother, Ridge, has always been one of the most talented people I know. My earliest memories with my brother are, you know, getting on the bike and towing him down the street on a skateboard way too fast and having him eat it. And then I'd come see if he was okay. And we were just picturing what we'd be doing in the future. And when he went off to college for four years, that dream sort of got put to the side. You know, he was doing his own thing. I was doing my own thing. And now that he's come back to Maui, he's really started to take interest into surfing again, like big waves. Um, and that dream that we had of being each other's tow partners is coming into fruition. I've been thinking about surfing big waves since I was four years old. Like Kai and I growing up, our whole lives was built around imagining us surfing Jaws essentially. And that's really was the basis for our childhood. So even though I recently just started actually surfing big waves, it feels like I've been preparing for it my whole life. So we're gonna go from the floor, glute min, leg behind, and you're gonna explode from here, right to the heel. And then explode up. Good. These lenses I'm wearing, it's lens deprivation. Essentially, I gotta feel more with my body and see with my body. And it makes like doing 180s or 360s onto the box feel like impossible. There you go. Good. Good. This guy's got wings. In my brother, I see a lot of talent and a lot of potential. But that being said, I like pushing him because I know his potential and I know how far he could go if he really wants to. And now he's getting that rhythm, coming to the gym, working out with me and Scott. Now he's taken the way he's learned on the mainland and he's applying it into the sport that we grew up doing. I think I could be better than Kai. I really do. I I think I want to be at the same level as him and I want to feel like I could push ahead. And I feel like I'm capable. Like we have the same genes, we have the same parents. There's no reason why I couldn't. <laughs> Having people that want to beat you and you want to beat them really just turns you into an athlete that you could never become on your own. And I want my brother to be outdoing me because it's just gonna fire me up to want to try to outdo him. First one, just do a giant seat drop. Hup. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ridge, I want to see you do this. 
One, two, three. It's really great to have my back push against the wall. And I look forward to those days where I am because there is no other choice but to go up. And so I think our teaming up is destiny. I see it. I got all my people with me. I don't win. President of the community. Representing for the CA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my CA. Yeah, yeah. I got all my people with me. President of the community. Yeah, yeah. Help me. Representing for the CA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking back on this as well, it just slingshotted me into what's next. Every session after that, and then even coming into this new winter, I have a different mindset. I finally feel like I'm starting to get comfortable. I'm not entirely there. That's many more years of doing this. But the difference is, is I no longer have to focus on being scared and then performance. I'm focusing on the performance first because I know what I can handle but it does take that dedication. And the only reason why I've been able to dedicate that kind of time to surfing all day long for the last 12 years in these giant, giant waves that could harm you is because I actually really love it. And it's my CA, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got all my people with me. President of the community. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm representing for the CA, yeah, yeah, yeah. The talk of the town almost immediately after we came in from surfing Peahi was Mavericks is gonna be good next week. People were calling it the day of days. And of course, Ridge was coming with us. <laughs> Mavericks is treacherous. Mavericks is probably one of the most likely spots you could drown. How big is it? Am I ready for this? Do I have the right board? It's gonna be zero to 100 real quick. Tomorrow's gonna be insane. 